Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kakadash. We want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. We want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, a few sisters who are pursuing the truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Today in class, we're going to go into the concept of free will. Okay, and how when you understand prophecy and how the rule works, it should endow you with the particular confidence that we're going to need in the times to come. Okay, so the first precept I'm going to start off with is uh, the precept in Daniel 2. And um, you can start at 2 and 20. Okay, this is Daniel 2 and 20. It says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, kind of says, and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and set it up kings. He removeth kings and set it up kings. So first off, nobody on earth is in the position that they're in. Or he's been put in, set up in a place unless the Lord ordained it. We mentioned earlier before we even started the lesson, no one goes off script. Okay. This is the most high movie. We always mention that concept because it's probably the simplest one to for people to comprehend. In a movie, when someone's given a script, you know, and, and the director has it set for them to say particular things for the story to flow, they're not just freelancing when they get in front of that camera. Right. You understand? So now with that, I want to get the example that you brought up, Todd, with Joseph. Oh. That, that's a that's a beautiful example, man. The Lord will have something, and, I, and I, I like saying this all the time. Sometimes the Lord will have you go through a particular adversity so that you can impart wisdom unto another brother later down the line. You know, sometimes you're not always just getting judged. Sometimes the Lord needs you to go through something because that particular adversity may not destroy you, but a new brother that comes in, he might go through that same thing. It could be something that's destructive to his life. But you're there now to impart wisdom unto him. You see, so the Lord, you know, he works much higher than we can comprehend in these, these measly bodies, man. Mm -hmm. If anybody's got any comments they want to hop in. Can I just finish that the precept? Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit more. This yeah. is back in Daniel 2 and 21. It says, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. It says, verse 22, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Yeah, man. So he imparts, like it says in Amos 3 and 7, he's the one that reveals those secrets unto his servants, the prophets. You understand? When he put when he put particular characteristics on a man and sets him up as the head of a camp, he was supposed to be there. That was his that's his lot to be the head of that camp. And you know, you got you got guys that we I ain't gonna bring them no names, but you got guys who they feel like they should and that'll that'll freak their whole walk over. Because they feel like they should know, man. You got to understand the Lord is the one moving the pieces. And you got to be okay with that. Yeah. Yep. Because yep. at the end of the day, um, you know, when it's all said and done, when you have an understanding that Yahweh by Shemal Shai is in control and that the end is already written from the beginning, it actually gives you a sense of comfort as well, too, knowing that the end is written from the beginning. Knowing that with that belief and with that faith that comes with what's already written, mm -hmm. that's what gives you that confidence. Yeah. You know? Um, I'll get that account for you in Genesis 50, um, 50 and 20, because when you read this account, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to summarize it pretty much with Joseph. You know, he got sold into captivity by his brothers, you know, and, um, you know, he got sold into Egypt and long story short, you know, he began, he began to become the second in command in Egypt. You know, uh, uh, he, he went through lots of adversity, you know, got accused of adultery, you know what I'm saying? He got cast into prison, but all these things happened. For him to rise up to a prominent position, ultimately for the will of the Most High to commence for the nation of Israel to not be destroyed, right? Right. So that, there was a drought in the land, and because of the visions that was given to uh, Joseph, Egypt was basically prominent, and they had stored up all this food where everybody was forced to come to Egypt to borrow. Even, even Jacob and his sons, you know, were forced into that position. Okay. So as you read the story and you get to this part within Genesis, the 50th chapter, uh, Joseph makes a very uh, insightful uh, comment to his brothers who were jealous of him. OK, mm -hmm. this is Genesis chapter 50. I read verse 19, but the point is in verse 20. It says, and Joseph said unto them, fear not, for am I in the place of the most high? 
the brothers came to him, you know, when, when Joseph pretty much revealed himself, his brothers were like, damn, you know, they, they didn't know how he was going to react, you know what I mean? Verse 20. Okay, kind of start at verse 17. Genesis chapter 50, verse uh, 17. It says, uh, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the Most High, the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Pretty much, you know, hey, have a mercy, right? It says, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, fear not, for am I in the place of the Most High? Uh, but as for you, ye thought evil against me. But the most high met it unto excuse me, but the most high met it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. See that? So the concept of, you know, his brethren selling him into captivity, selling him into slavery, you know, he went through all these different adversities and things of that nature to rise up to become the second man, the second in command, have the visions and the dreams, to store up the food for seven years, for his brothers to come up to him in the future. Yeah was all set up by Yahweh Bashmael Shah and predestinated so that the nation of Israel would not be destroyed. And what's funny is when he when they were, you know, his kids and he was on the farm basically and he had that dream and he told his brothers that the, the deliverance of how they were going to be delivered is what inspired his brothers to move on him that way. So he the Lord put the spirit on those who tell him the dream. He could have kept it to himself. But he, you know Hey, remember the dream it said that he had a dream that he seen 12 stars making yeah. obese or something. That, that's the dream. <laughs> that, that was his brother. He, he, yeah. he so that inspired them to, you know, sell him into slavery and him going into Egypt to come in second. It's all, he was talking about strength there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, this is time. Yeah, man. I mean, the most high has this thing locked down. You're not going to move outside the, the course and the plan that he's already set. Now, you might feel like, now, do we make choices? Yeah, you make choices. But it's all within the ramifications of the Most High's might, will, power, and knowledge. Right. It doesn't escape him. When you got up and, like I said, you wore blue today, uh, uh, Michael, you wore red. That's not outside the, the, the mindset of the Heavenly Father where he understands it's your little bitty choices that you make. Yo, you playing, you playing, you playing on a video game, you go left instead of right. Like, well, I bet I tricked the Most High. He didn't know I was going to go right or uh, left. No, everything is within his. Everything is within his ultimate knowledge and understanding. That's why the scripture says that his thoughts are not our thoughts, man. His ways are higher than our ways. Right. Okay. You know, I always use the example of string theory because I think that it it, it gives you something in your mind to kind of conceptualize it. Really, this idea of free will is us trying to understand choice. And, and and how you know and how infinite it is in our head. Like in our head, choice is like the infinity symbol. Like it can go so many different directions. But choice and time is still enca encapsulated with the Most High. It's not beyond Him. Okay. Even the idea of time. Okay. You, when you start really thinking about it, it can make your mind feel like it's going to explode because it goes. You know. It, but it's that's nothing to the Heavenly Father. That's not an equation beyond the Heavenly Father, man. Okay, and so the whole idea of string theory is this, is that the choices that you make can put you on a different path in the universe, right? So because you decide to do this, now you, you're on this string in time, right? And you, or, or you, you decide to do that, now you're on, you're now you're on this string in, in, in the concept of time. Well, if you decide to be a sinful person, it's going to lead you down this path of destruction. If you if you choose to be a, a, a person that follows the Heavenly Father, it's going to take you down. But it's already written. It's already, all, all of those those choices and what comes out of it is already written <laughs> into the Heavenly Father, man. There's nothing beyond Him, man. So as we make the uh, the so-called choice, you know, in our in our little, you know, peanut brains, we think it's our choice to be here in this ministry. But really, it's the Most High who's appointing He's appointing whoever he chooses. We don't choose. We're just appointed to be here. But we're walking in something that is not seen. We're walking completely in faith. And there's power in belief. You know? And when you walk completely in faith, the risk that we talked about. There's no risk. 
of of oh, what am I losing if I if I choose to you know discard this life and just be in this ministry? If I choose to just focus on this, yeah. I'm losing it. No, there is no risk if you believe because you know the outcome already. You read it and you believe it and you know it's already done in your mind. Yeah, right. And how was I reaffirmed that to the disciples when Peter asked? <clears throat> We forsaken our all, our all houses, mm-hmm. you know, which we received it for. And he told them they would receive a hundredfold. There's no risk following me. Yeah. And you, you really got to believe that. We talked about faith yesterday. Understanding the prophecies and all that, it kind of builds your faith because you're like, well, hold on. I know for sure the Lord said this is going to happen. He said he was going to do this. What do I have to worry about? It was like uh, Abraham. Mm-hmm. When Abraham uh, sacrificed, uh, he's like, look, the Lord said he's going to bring him back. He's going to bring him back. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the risk was gone. It wasn't no risk. You know, mm-hmm. he was like, he, 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 the Lord said he's going to bring him back. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I got a quick precept. Okay. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 6. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm-hmm. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Okay? So so the choices or the, the, the steps that you take within this ministry, knowing that the most I told you this information, you heard about the kingdom, you heard about the name of Yahweh Yahweh and everything that comes along with it. Now what are you going to do in your body? What are you going to do now in this present time? You know, because everybody's going to uh, appear before the Lord in that time. Yeah. All right. Just like you getting ready to start a business. You don't know if that business is going to be profitable. You're taking a risk. risk. <laughs> but you confidently go ahead and start your business believing that it's going to be profitable one day. Believing that in the end it's going to work out for you and your family, right? right. So what? How much more uh, in this profession that we're taking on in the ministry? This the Lord's business. The Lord's business. We we like take on this mission, believing and hoping in something that we don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we do know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. I got a precept for you. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, Psalm 139, verse 16. I'm gonna read it in the NLT. It says, "You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book." Mm, look at every, that. every moment was laid out before a single day has passed. What scripture is that? Psalm 139, verse 16. Okay. I'll read it again. It says, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Right. Every day of our life was recorded in in, in, in Yahweh Bashem Al Shah's in, in Yahweh Bashem Al Shah's vision of our life. It was already it was already pre it was already predetermined before we was conceived. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Right? The Lord is omnipotent and omnipresent. Um, time was explained to me like this when somebody would say the Lord exists outside of time. If you had a storybook and you ripped all the pages out and you laid them out on the floor from beginning to end, you can see the whole story at once. The Lord exists outside of us. When he gives us prophecy and he's giving to us that, hey, this is going to happen at this point, da, 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 da. we're in the story. So yeah. we're like, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we're like, oh, you guys can't see my body language on the, on the phone, but. You know, if you're in the store, you're like, what? If somebody was to tell you that, but for the Lord to give us these prophecies, he's imparted to us a whole nother dimension of understanding mm-hmm. that people on the earth, immortal bodies, they can't comprehend that. Right. It right. says that in Wisdom of Solomon. Nah, that's, uh, I had that hill. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because it says, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians, it says, who has known the mind of the Lord? Mm-hmm. But it says, but we have the mind of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which Yahweh Shai has the mind of the Heavenly Father. So we, like, the, the mysteries that we have through the Spirit, right. It's that's why this is this supernatural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, we, we said it some weeks back, it would be like trying to explain to people a new color. They can't, you can't envision a new color. You have no point of reference. All right? But the men of the Lord... Through the Spirit, the Lord has allowed us to see something that no one else can see. If you're, you know, if you've been a part of understanding, you can see things that people just can't see. Mm-hmm. You can talk to them till you're blue in the face. It's not that gift wasn't given to them. That gift of faith wasn't given to them to really see this thing. Right. And mm-hmm. conceptualize it. That's a yeah. good analogy. Like introducing a new color to somebody. Yeah, right. You can't, you can't, can't explain it. We yeah. can't. See, we can't like, even. Uh, do that. You don't have the words for it. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Confirmation of 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 Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. That's right. Every that's moment. That was a good analogy with the, the pages torn out too. Yeah, that was funny. My grandfather explained it to me when I was a kid, so I could understand. Right. You know that you got that's it, that's the best way to explain stuff. You want to explain it, keep in mind, like you were talking to a child. Right. You want to make it simple as possible. Right. The best teachers make something yeah. complicated yeah. simple. Yeah. You know? It's crazy that like we, we got the spirit, but. Like DNA in itself is like a story. Mm-hmm. And they said there's enough information within a, a pinky finger to fill hundreds of thousands of libraries. So imagine how complex oh my this creation is. Like, and what is that? We don't really understand what that is. Esau understands mm-hmm. it, but that's like a story. Like your program is written in you. Yep. It's it's your, 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 yeah. your book. Yeah. Can I read verse 14 real quick? Yep, yep. I'll read it in the NLT. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Excuse me. How well I know it. So he said, you, the Lord made us complex. Like we are complex. Like, the human body in itself is complex. Yeah. So you got like you got a you got a you got an autonomous yeah. portion portions of your body. Like you you can't you don't when you you don't control your blood flowing in your body. Like that's just something that just naturally just happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's happening. Different blood types. You're breathing, you know, your lungs, how the blood flows through your lungs and oxygen flowing out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the There's Lord know how many hair is on your head. You know what I'm saying? He know why your hair line gone. <laughs> <laughs> he know when it's coming back. That's heavy, man. You know, we can't go there. We can't yeah. go there. You know? Will they come back? I want to say, who knows? Right? Lord knows. Oh, my goodness. You still had, you had more. Um, no, that was it on that. That's a banger right there in Psalms. Yeah, that was a good. Um, so let's go to Wisdom of Solomon in the ninth chapter. Do you want to read it in this GNT? You want me to read it in the GNT? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Wisdom of Solomon uh, 9, and I'll just start at uh, 13 in the GNT here. It says, uh, who can ever learn the will of God? Human reason is not adequate for the task. Human reason is not adequate for the task. <laughs> Man. Man. It's uh, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 13 in the GNT. It says, who can ever learn the will of God? Human reason is not adequate for the task. When you do that, that's where, where doubt creeps in. When you're trying to know the will of the Heavenly Father and calculate his steps and tell him what he's doing right and wrong, mm-hmm. that's where doubt and, and mm-hmm. faithlessness comes in, mm-hmm. right? And that's where, when you have belief, you just you know the Most High is doing what He's supposed to do. He's doing His thing. His thoughts are higher than ours, like mm-hmm. He said in Isaiah fifty-five. Isaiah 55. Yep, seven. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Um, and our philosophies tend to mislead us mm-hmm. because our mortal bodies weigh our souls down. The body is a temporary structure made of earth, a burden to the active mind. All we can do is make guesses about the things on earth. We must struggle to learn about the things that are close to us. Who then can ever hope to understand the heavenly things? Verse 17 to 20. Mm-hmm. No one has ever learned your will unless you first gave him wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit down to him. That's mm-hmm. it. That's so it. Who, who is the Holy Spirit sent down to? Man? <laughs> the prophets. The prophets, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, somebody, like I said uh, before the lesson, I seen on the, I was watching the video, I seen in the comments. People, you know, risk their just throw away their whole lot following after the Bible. No, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. we're not. We're gaining life. That's right. We're gaining immortality by, you know, offending less by seeking the Lord with all our hearts. You know, you, you had some of these. Nah, the desire yeah. of wisdom leads yeah. to a kingdom. Neither we read it last time. Right, yeah. Wisdom so, six. Let's get that wisdom of six and eight. Wisdom Yo. song six and eighteen. <laughs> yeah, man. There's there's no risk at the end. When you've been imparted to understand the Lord, you know, has revealed things unto you. Which he, there's men on the earth clearly that the understanding is going to be revealed unto. All right, who's that? Who's that uh, portion with no guile in their mouth in uh, Revelation the 14th chapter? They right. clearly had understanding of these things to take on those violent deaths. Yep. That uh, what the starting with the Lord to yep. take on to take on that death. Mm-hmm. He also took on that resurrection, but it was through. You know what I'm saying? He he, he believed it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he wouldn't have done it if he didn't believe it. He stood on it. If he didn't fear the Lord, if he didn't believe, if he didn't have faith, he wouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. You know? And we come in that same stead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Everybody waiting for the most out to do something first, but yeah. then they're going to believe. Yeah. By right. then, it's going to be too late. Yeah. You got to get in early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it's not seen. Yep. When it's not big. I was making, you know, we was talking about McDonald's. Yeah. When the, when the McDonald's brothers first started the franchise. And they didn't have two pennies to rub together. But now they're the number one place in the world. Yeah. What if you would have invested early? You know what I'm saying? You be great. You know, so how about what about in this truth, man? No one no one believes, oh y'all not the Israelites. Yeah. Well, they won't tell you who the Israelites are, but it can't be us. Yeah. You know, uh, that he ain't coming. He ain't gonna come save y'all. Okay. Sure. Y'all waiting on the Scott Daddy? Yeah. Yeah. Come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yep. We are gonna see. Mm-hmm. And we can speak with that confidence because you know, again, the Lord has imparted something unto us. The same, you know, uh, gumption that Abraham was encouraged with to, to you know, do what was asked of him. The elect are gonna be, you know, endowed with that same kind of confidence to move in that way. That's right. You have some time? <clears throat> I do have a precept real quick. This is uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 and 32. It says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field, excuse me, in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. Because right now, you know, like the truth is looked at as this, this uh, you know, it's despised, it's 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 small, yeah. people scoffing at it, they're like, oh yeah, that ain't gonna happen, you know, or whatever the case may be, whatever they say. Right? It says, Matthew 13, verse 32 now. Okay. It says, uh, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. So with the mustard seed being the smallest seed, it grows into this humongous tree. Roots are deep. And the roots are deep. Yeah. You know, but right now it looks it looks insignificant. It looks like it's small. It looks like it's minute. You know, but that's how the heavenly Father wants it. That's how Yahweh wash and wash wants it. So that whenever the uh, whenever the, the the water hits the seed, you know, and it flourishes, it becomes it becomes this grand grandiosus tree. Yeah, I think I showed, showed you guys the picture of a mustard seed tree. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, it can't yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It could cover like uh, it would cover like a little mm-hmm. small neighborhood. Yeah, so it was it was huge. It was multiple houses underneath this tree. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that one tree. Under that one tree. Many. It says many birds. It says uh, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof, man. So, you know what how Hashem Al Shah is revealed unto us. You know we're getting in early. Yeah. You know because, like Yahweh Shah said, he said uh, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but they don't even clearly see the sign that the Lord has placed in front of them now. Via being the prophets, being His word going out. Big flag. Yeah, it's funny, man. I'm looking at this McDonald's chart. I pulled it up. And uh, back when they first came out, them niggas was worth, one share was two, uh, $2.45 back in 1983. Now, it's $293 a share. That's right right around a, a hundred X your money. Yeah. Just like the Lord told. Yeah, hundred fold. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's 118 X yeah. up on yeah. your bag. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh, you bro. Yeah. What? In the eighties, McDonald's was out before the eighties, right? Yeah, but they yeah. they wasn't public. They wasn't a public oh, uh, okay. corporation. Yeah. 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 So, but we we really invested before before even public. public. Yeah. But for, yeah, we before that. Right? Yeah. yeah, we're at the bottom level. Before it's an IPO. Yeah. 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 We like Amazon. We in the garage. Right. You know. <laughs> 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 you know uh, but, yeah, but when the uh, when the, when the chariots come, it's gonna go public, and everybody gonna be down there. Yeah, but yeah, the biggest the reward is before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being ground floor right now, getting the word out. Hey, yeah. there's a, there, there, there's something new coming. There's a new kingdom coming. Now, watch me, Shai is gonna send this. You know, yeah, it's gonna send power and glory. Y'all, be, you wanna be down with this now? What you talking about? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the carnal mind of people can't see it because they don't like the source from which it's coming. They look at us and they're like, how could this equate to that? Right. You telling me you, y'all going to have to meet on the earth? Yep. Come on, man. Yep. That's how it looks. They, are, they have their carnal eyes, but they, you know, we have the spiritual eyes. Yep. So a couple of precepts in this aspect of the lesson will go more into risk uh-huh. and also how the Lord controls our enemies too. Yeah. Because if the Lord controls our enemies, what the hell are we, what should we ever be worried about? Mm-hmm. You know, you had I, that, you had that, uh, oh, you had I got song? a precept okay. just real quick. This is in uh, John, the 20th chapter, um, with Thomas. 
And then he, yeah, Dalton Thomas, that whole story with Thomas did, wanted to believe it was him, and he, he put his hand down, said, "Here, touch." Yeah. And so this is what the the Lord said to him in John chapter twenty, verse twenty nine. Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the Most High is looking for: ultimate belief and faith. Y'all bros got it. Only way we can believe. That was the Lord that breathed on the disciples right before he walked before Thomas got there. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was levels to that. You know what I'm saying? They had already seen him. He breathed on him. You know what I'm saying? And then Thomas came and was like, Well, you gonna have to show me. You know what I'm saying? But the disciples that was above him, they already had they was already given what was necessary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what faith is, hope in the unseen, like it tells you in Hebrews eleven. Yeah. You know, faith. Hey, what would be the, the need for faith if, if it's actually tangible. Yeah, you know. Yeah, right. check this out though. I love these last two verses. Verse uh, uh, thirty says, "And many other signs truly did Yahweh Shai in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, right? But these are written that ye might believe that Yahweh Shai is Hamashiach, the Son of the Most High, and that believing ye might have life through His name." Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man. So a lot of people, you know. He's giving you what you needed in order to believe, yeah. right? And you have to see it in your in, in your in your spiritual mind. That mm -hmm. The Most High gives you the Holy Spirit to receive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like what the Lord said. He said, "Blessed are your eyes, for they see; and your ears, yeah. they hear." Because yeah. many men that desire to see and hear the things that y'all see. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Straight up. Anybody have any other people oh, in the I, I did. Okay. Um, uh second Ezra chapter one and uh verse thirty seven it says I take to witness the grace of the people to come who little ones rejoice in gladness and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes yet in spirit they believe the things that I say. Ooh, yeah. yeah so uh, being able to believe without physically you know seeing I mean that's what faith is all about you know I mean it's the evidence of things not seen we have evidence of something that we didn't see plainly with our eyes which is you know spiritually it's basically spiritually discerned what verse was that uh second that was one and 37 oh, man, it's that, i know it's like like the hebrew like the, the actual pronunciation of the hebrew yeah. you know like we didn't we didn't we wasn't we, we didn't physically hear you know us Speaking the you know the, yeah. the ancient Lashawan for Gosh, but we know in faith that what we're speaking is the actual true Hebrew. Mm -hmm. right. But people scoff at it. They like, oh, you know, like your Elder Yashawan, we did your lesson laying back and off the other about, you know. Yeah. It's like you know I got a PhD in languages, and it's like, like you know what I'm saying, like no, like in faith we know what we 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 know yeah. we believe, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like eat shrimp, like you got all this wisdom, but <laughs> look how you live your life, man. Right. It's completely through. <laughs> Right, me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he does, but I'm just saying, like, what the Probably hell with that? You know, yeah, he's a small ass, so he may try to keep some Torah, Torah laws, but the elect wouldn't be boasting in no damn degrees. We went to them schools. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doctrination oh, counts. Uh, and the failure. people who went to those seminary schools, they don't have the spirit. They don't understand the prophecies. Like, Dr. Brown said, Jeremiah 50 and 51 is talking about Neo, the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Clearly, when you read that, that's not talking yeah, about that. Is a lot of yeah. So, right there, like, you, yeah, you, 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 you should give them, you should give that money to us. <laughs> yeah, wisdom Psalm 6, and then we'll, we'll um, get some examples of, you know, our enemies wishing to harm us, but it wasn't in their jurisdiction to do so. Haman. Haman. Pharaoh's heart being hardened. Yeah. Give me examples of that. Oh, I'm over in the east with uh, Judah and Judah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all the examples of Brother we'll get, we'll touch on some of those examples and we'll kind of, after that, yeah. you, know, uh, you said verse 18, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 18. It says, And the love, and love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. Wherefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
It's saying on verse number one, if your delight be then in thrones and, and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. Yeah, man, so there's men upon the earth, there's the elect that are seeking after the Lord's wisdom, not the wisdom of the world. We don't, we don't validate our reputation based off of the gifts. We don't validate our reputation based off of the things that we have. We, we validate ourselves off of, are we serving the Lord to the best of our ability? Okay, and the Lord put that spirit on us at the end of the day. We, that wasn't of our own accord. He has not chosen me, but I have chosen you, correct? Okay, so um, now I want to go to uh, Exodus 9, where the Lord talks about how he, he said the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. I mean, you can get that example. You can mention it if you would. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, Exodus chapter 9, verse. y'all looking for? Exactly. Like Mark, Mark, okay. Mark. Yeah, I got you. Okay, this is uh, Exodus chapter 9, verse 12. It says, And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he and he hearkened not unto them. Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Right? So there you go again. The Lord is dictating the mind of men. Like it says in Proverbs 20, 24, man's going of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Okay, Jeremiah, what? Uh, the first chapter? He says, before I, uh, you in the womb of the belly, I, I formed thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. People are giving their part in the movie from the jump. It was mm -hmm. already decided that Pharaoh's heart was going to be hardened. And somebody, you know, who doesn't believe would be like, why would he have Pharaoh chase after them and all of that? And he's trying to deliver them. That makes no sense. No, his name had to be glorified among the nations. Right. right. Everything, he, he's controlling both both sides. I think it's not going to tell you that too. Yeah. For, for a particular result. Okay. And for, you know, later in this time, to the weekend, be like, yeah, oh, whoa, he, he did it then. Why wouldn't he do it now? And Jeremiah 15 tells you he's going to do that same thing, but on a greater level. Right. You know? Oh, I got to preach something. Okay. Proverbs 21 and 1. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Mm -hmm. So right now we're looking at this crazy-ass situation with Joe Biden and how they're doing the bidding of the elite to bring forth all of this nasty stuff. But the, we needed that. Right. That had to happen for prophecy's sake. So the mm -hmm. Lord put the spirit on, you know what I'm saying, them to bring all of these crazy ass agendas that it lines up with Sodom and Egypt. Yeah. It, it basically fulfills prophecy. So, man. man I got a precept laying back off what you just read. Jeremiah 27 and 5. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground. By my great power and by my stretch, excuse me, by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. So who, who, who you know, whoever's in power is is meet for Yahweh Bashem Al Shah's purpose at the end of the day for ultimately prophecy to be fulfilled. Right. You know, like the you know the mass, you know, it was annoying. You know, and yeah. all the mandates coming by, they're annoying, they're irritating. Yeah. But we understand and know. Through the, through the spirit of poverty, how about you know, Shabbat understand and know that these things must come to pass. They have to happen. John saw it. Yeah, that's the, that's <laughs> right. the foundational yeah. thing for this, for when he starts to speak as a dragon. You know, he starts to, yep. you know, make the draconian, bring those draconian measures back. It's being built up to that point once again. I got one to back up. The other Yashima of the Priest Tithes. This is in uh, Psalm 75 and 6. It says, For promotion cometh neither from the east nor the from the west nor from the south. And promotion it means rulership pretty much. It says, But the most high is the judge. He put it down one and set it over it and set it up over it another. Hmm. So that's clear to the point. The most high, he's the judge, like it says in Daniel 4. Uh, he the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men, and he set it up over it, the bases of men. So we got a base nation of people ruling over us, but it's all because the most high, he he has the, the overall authority to set it up that way. You know, so that does bring you a, a certain level of comfort in knowing that, you know. Yeah. Because we deal with people who argue with us about, oh, what we say is right and wrong, you know, people in the world. Right. But you can't argue that the Lord prophesied particular nations will rule, that there will be these four major kingdoms set up. Mm -hmm. You can't argue with prophecy. You can't argue with, you know, the MOTB being established. You're going to need a certain device to function within society. That's written way ahead of time. Yeah. Can you argue? Yeah. Can you say, oh, that's not. No, it's in our face, and you see them moving towards it. There's certain things you just can't. When you go to prophecies, you can't argue with the prophecies of the book, man. 
circular history even backs up the prophecies because yeah. you're going to Daniel the second chapter, all of those kingdoms, yeah. those were actually kingdoms. When you go into the circular history, yeah. the secular history you can that study. Yeah. The Persians, the Greeks, the Medes, you know, the freaking yeah. mission, man. All you, it's, it's all there. Those names, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and for those people who don't want to read, they make movies about all these different people and all these different accounts. Yeah, you know, you can watch a movie on uh, uh, on all these all these Bible movies. Yeah. you know, and then they take certain aspects and certain concepts in the Bible and put them in other movies for people who would never even yeah realize that that's where that concept came from. Right, like right. bro, they talk about that when you talk about superpowers and heroes and flying and all these different things. It's None of those are original ideas. No, it, it all comes from the same spot. It comes from the same source. Especially in the law, like they got that term, uh, split the baby. Like if it's a it's a, a difficult decision to mm -hmm. be made, they got that from King Solomon. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? Man. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we, okay, go ahead. Uh, just back up. I got strong about this. Complete the nation. Uh, Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst of it. They have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his own men's folly. Mm -hmm. So most I mean with that, that nasty spirit in this place. Yeah. That was another prophecy, like we're talking about, Revelation 11 and 8, that spirit of Sodom and Egypt. Mm -hmm. That kingdom had to come forth, and most I had to unleash those spirits on the left hand side to get it popping in. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. like that council of the first Kings 22, mm -hmm. they had that council of what he can do to the king. And spirit, so I'll go down to your mind, spirit, and I was prophet. Yeah. So right. both sides control both sides. Right, because we enjoy Trump better. He was better to look at, you know, talk, listen to. Yeah. But we needed Biden. Right. 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 And he right. was the perfect, I mean, although it's the elite, he was perfect for the job. Yeah. yeah. He's just a sloppy, nasty, ugly <laughs> worm. Yeah. That's yeah. a scoundrel. Put him in a suit. You know what I'm saying? Put him in front of America and just let him just Stop fall all and shit place. all over yeah, the place. Yeah. <laughs> Filling on people. He's perfect for what that brother just read. Yeah, yeah. yeah he really is. Like, he's mingling the perverse <laughs> spirit. <laughs> yep. yeah. So the Lord did. Yeah, Biden's dead. Yeah. That's bad. Yep. <laughs> and, 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 and it's for us. So we can say, oh, hey, look, look at that. This is what prophecy says. It matches up. Yep. Right. And again, nobody can argue with that. Nobody he's can argue literally with staggering. That. Yeah, he's just falling, falling and tripping over man. shit. <laughs> Nobody can argue that this place is spiritual sovereignty. Right, 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 right. Nobody can argue that America is the, is the epicenter which the elites use to push that vibration on Earth. Right? Yeah. That's why there's this big debate. The, the Western ways are better than it. No. no. It's being made manifest that, oh, this is that the kingdom that's prophesied that operate in the spirit of Sodom. Mm -hmm. hmm, this seems like it's it. Yeah, you know? And Sodom didn't burn. Sodom wasn't burned the first day was mentioned it, it built up to that you yeah. know what i'm saying that all that wickedness had to take place yeah, for it to up. be hit with fire you yeah. know Man, it's crazy i was looking up how many times joe biden fell in public and he fell seven times complete amount of times wow Man. wow <laughs> in public he fell seven times bro. <laughs> Damn. <Total. laughs> that's a lot bro once yeah, you get a certain when you get a certain bushes. age you don't just fall down <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, Falling down at a certain age. After you get it, you know, my, it's my son, he, he likes to fall down just to fall down. Mm -hmm. But when you become grown, you don't fall down. That's one of my biggest fears. That's an event. That's one of my biggest fears. I to trip over some you shit. Like, oh. <laughs> it takes forever. It takes forever to fall. Once you get past 30 something, it takes forever to fall down. <laughs> They said that he fell a total of seven times in public, but oh, it was eight man. times. Well, one, one one was occurred in the shower, but eight is a, like infinite. You see what I'm saying? Damn, like, seven man. is complete, then eight is infinite. He Babylon, keep, he is, keep Babylon falling. is going. Babylon is already yeah, set up to fall. Keep man. falling. They belong to the Psalm seventy-three. Yeah. In the shower, he slipped. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's the worst yeah. that happens. He fell in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Man. You can't brace yourself in those showers. Yeah, you know, you bust your head on that. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the shower curtain, curtain the that. rain's falling all over the floor. You cold in there. Curtain yeah, all in the shower with some Nikes on. I got the story <laughs> of, uh, of Balaam. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to read it in, the, in the Wikipedia. I'm not going to go to the scripture. You know, I got Balaam pulled up in Wikipedia. It says, Balaam is a diviner in the Torah whose story begins in chapter 22 of the book of Numbers. Ancient references to, to Balaam consider him a non-Israelite, a prophet, and the son of Beor. King Balak of Moab offered him money to curse Israel. 
But Balaam blessed the Israelites instead as dictated by the Most High. Mm -hmm. See that? And so the Most High can put it, you know, he, he's the one who's in control, man. Yes. You know, this is another around. example. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. So if you know that, when we start to see, you know, this devil start to move, because he's going to make it look like there's no way out. And for those who are rooted in the faith, a lot of people that know the Israelites, they're going to fold. Majority of the Israelites, man, they're going to take the ship. They're going to do whatever they can just to keep going along to get along. Yeah. So the those who really have the faith, even in the, the midst of saying like there's no escape, they're gonna be the ones that are willing to be like, hey, well, the Lord's gonna work this out some kind of way. Yeah. I'm just gonna be still. All right, and that's the confidence that you can have when you understand those stories like that. You can bring some remembrance. Okay, the Lord never puts let's go get first uh Maccabees too. <laughs> that's my chapter. Because mm -hmm. this is uh it, it just rambles off this whole list of examples of yeah, men that operated in faith and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And how the Lord ain't, if you operate in faith, the Lord ain't gonna leave you hanging. He, mm -hmm. he will never do that. I even say that to Sirach. What's that, Sirach too? I got it. Who had ever trusted in the Lord, called on the name of the Lord, and was confounded. Right. All right, this is uh, 1 Maccabees 2 and 50. It says, Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Mm -hmm. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. You're going to receive salvation. All right? Those who operate in faith and get delivered, they, 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 in, our, in our book, they receive great honor and an everlasting name. What are you at? That's first Maccabees 2. Uh, first Maccabees 2 and 50. I'm at verse 52 now because it's going to go into all of the different examples. You, you can kind of, you can, if you want to just kind of speed through that and get down to where, uh, like at the end of that, like 60, 60 or 59. Or, okay. Which wherever, one was where it says that, that uh, none that was there trusted him. For the truth of okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll just read some of these. I'll start at 52. It says, mm -hmm. was not Abraham found faithful in temptation, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? Went through that example. Mm -hmm. Joseph, we just went into that one. In the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. For the Lord's purpose to deliver our, and we went into that as the first example we went to, right? Yep, yep. So there's, there's a formula for deliverance here that we're starting to see. I'm going I'm to jump down a little bit. Verse 58, it says, Elias, for being zealous and fervent for the law, was taken up into heaven, and Ananias, Azarias, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the, the flame. Mm -hmm. It says, Daniel, for his innocent innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions, and thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So that is the whole recipe for us to be delivered. And that's a gift. The Lord gave us that gift of faith. And it's something that has to be nurtured in our walk, right? Especially during like we talked about this grace period. We talked about this grace period is our opportunity to, to nurture, you know, that faith. Yeah. But um, there's not a lot of people that walk in faith that are going to have it in the time to come. Even people that are wearing fringes, you know. You can read that, uh, that last verse one more time. Okay, this is First Maccabees two and sixty one. It says, "And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in Him shall be overcome." Right, man. Mm -hmm. so that's the recipe for us, and that's been being pushed in these past couple months repetitively, because that's what you're gonna need to, you know, to stand up against the evil doer in this time to come. Uh, somebody had a precept? Uh, yeah, you had the, the, the Judas? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, you said you was reading Balaam? No, that was it. Yeah, okay. that was it. All right, I'm going to get this in uh, Judas. Basically, this is like the um, the song that she sung after, you know, uh, the Lord allowed her to triumph, you know, over the situation. Uh, this is Judas 16 and uh, verse uh, 4. It says, Ashur was the Assyrians. Ashur came out of the mountains from the north. He came with ten thousands of his army, the multitude whereof stopped the torrents, and their horsemen have covered the hills. He bragged that he would burn up my borders and kill my young men with the sword and dash the sucking children against the ground and make my infants as a prey and my virgins as a spoil. But the almighty Lord, Yahweh, has disappointed them by the hand of a woman. Uh, I'm going to drop down to verse 17. It says, 
Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. The Lord Yahweh Almighty will make, excuse me, will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment and putting fire and worms in their flesh and they shall feed them and weep, excuse me, and they shall feel them and weep forever. So, you know, if you read the account of Judah, you'll see exactly how the detailed events, you know, happened to where, you know, the Assyrian Empire, you know, basically after they had already uh, taken over the northern kingdom, they were coming for the southern kingdom and they wanted to, you know, besiege the city. Uh, no, they did besiege the city, excuse me, uh, to the point where, you know, the, the city was at, at a point of starvation and the Lord, you know, allowed Judah to, uh, to uh, basically kill the captain of the host of the Assyrian army. Whereas, you know, Israel would have had no hope against fighting against them on, on, on the battlefield. And the Lord pretty much preserved, you know, that, that area and that city from, uh, you know, from being killed. So it's another example in history, you know, yeah. if you know about that account. Yeah. All right, so let's get um, Ephesians 1 and uh, verse 5 and jump to verse 11. Okay, good. Okay. Then after that, we'll get James 1 and 1, and there's a word I want to look up in verse 2. So we might pretty much do it in that first chapter. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to himself. Predestinated. So, told him before the foundations of the earth were particular spirits to walk a particular walk. Well, that's a little one we're part of that number. The wicked, two thirds. Everybody's been given their, their portion in the, in the Lord's name. It says, According to the good pleasure of his will. His will. Not your own. You're not just out here free, willy nilly, just doing your own thing. There's a script that you were given. Right? His will. Yeah. yeah, his will. Mm-hmm. Like the director of a movie, he, he gives you his script. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, because it says it, it's, it's his choice. So even if you do decide to make a choice, ultimately the choice that you make is his choice. Regardless, at the end of the day, now can we quantify that and you know, put that into a like put that into a deeper understanding. I mean, no, we really can't. Yeah. When it's all said and done. Yeah. But we understand mm-hmm. and know that even if you make a, a decision whereas you are differentiating the two opinions, whatever the case may be, ultimately the the, the route you go is the route that was, was already set for you up. It was already set up in the in the spirit. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, what was that you said go down to verse eleven you said? Mm-hmm. Verse eleven and then we'll put verse one 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 and wrap it up. All right. This is uh, Ephesians chapter one verse eleven. It says in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him, the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So, you know, that should, that, that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> because the fact that we have this knowledge, that we're walking in it, that, you know, this is what's in the forefront of our minds every day, that means you, you, partic- you might be a part, you know, of those who are chosen. We've all been called, but the fact that we're doing this and we're, we're putting our all into it, we're better off than most people. All these people you see walking around there, right. you know, you have a, we have a, we have a, we have a shot. Yeah. Most these people don't. Because um, when you understand that, if I may, if I may add a point, because when you understand the fact that, you know, His will is already set, that's what brings forth. That's what gives us comfort. Yeah. Right. That's what gives you peace because you know, like these these people out here, they don't have. They don't have no peace because the spirit of Yahweh watching out shot with them, but wasn't revealed unto them to understand the end. Right. You see, like we, we understand the end. Like Babylon is already, you know, Babylon is already destroyed in the spirit. It's, we could read about it. Yeah. Now we gotta we gotta play it out. You know, we gotta actually live it out. You know what I mean? But it's already written that it's done. It's, it's, it's the smoke of a burning going up forever. It's already written. Yeah. You know, but and then we got the the blueprint for success for <laughs> salvation, but we just Ultimately, we got we don't know if we're we don't know if we're chosen. But we know we're called. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like having that 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 brings forth comfort. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, we have an inkling that hey, we might be. You know what I mean? The Most High man, he's he's at the movie premiere. You know how they have the movie premiere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. director's watching it, but he knows. You know, there's no surprises for him in the movie. So we got to trust the director. You know, he know he know what he's doing. Even the cast, the yeah. cast watched the movie too. And even yeah. they, they, the cast watching the movie, they, yeah. they watching themselves on the screen. But even the cast, when they watch the movie, they yeah. were like, oh, like you're like, oh, because they didn't see the yeah. edit. The director seen the edit already. He yeah. seen the, you know, okay, we're gonna use this clip. 
you know, color grade this way so this to get the particular emotion to the audience when they see it. You know what I mean? Everything he he knows all the ins and outs and the nuances of the movie. Right. He didn't. He doesn't have to explain all the little nuances to the cast, yeah. right? Yeah. But they had they understand the, the the flow of the story. They know their role. They know their role. I got one real quick. Acts fifteen and eighteen. Known unto the Most High are all his works from the beginning of the world. Mm. <laughs> That's something I already thought you want my long <laughs> in one sentence. Yep. You know? Uh, any more precepts before we read this James 101? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. This is uh, Luke 22, verse 56. It says, But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and was going to uh, Peter, going to uh, deny him how he shot. And earnestly looked upon him, and he said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I'm not him. <laughs> and after a little while after, saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Man, no, I ain't. Man, I'm not. And Yahweh Shah told him he was going to do that ahead of time. Yeah, that's not yep, me. Yep, yeah. right. <laughs> and he said, I will not do that. That's the only thought. And after a little while after, saw him and said, Thou art uh, of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of an hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I am not. What thou say? <laughs> Man, you know, <laughs> man, I don't know what I don't know man, what you said. No, I'm not. Man, no, I ain't. No, it's not. I've seen y'all on the videos. Yeah, 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 was, yeah. Yep. What you talking about, man? That's definitely you. That was me. And immediately, while he uh, yet spake, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord. And that was Yahweh Shai. And he has said unto him before the cock crowed, that thou deny me tw uh, twice, thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Woo, oh, man. This is already determined. Peter already said, no, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not going to deny you, Lord, but it's already written. Mm -hmm. So that, could that will, the, uh, his uh, Lord will be changed? No. This is going to be done. That's scary. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. like Jesus is scary. Yeah. I was just about to find yep. it, bro. I'm literally looking at the yeah. account right now. He's going to say, do what you need me to do. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Man, can I get that for it? Because I was yeah. actually looking it up. Yeah, it's uh, right here. This is uh, this is the book of St. John, chapter 13, and uh, verse 26. It says, uh, Yahweh shall answer, uh, he it is to whom I will, to whom I shall give a sock when I have dipped it. Because they was asking him who was going to betray him, right? And when he had dipped the sock, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sock, Satan entered, entered into him. Then say Yahweh Shai unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. So he told him, like, man, do what you have to do. Because ultimately, what? Prophecy had to be fulfilled. Right. You see? Yeah. Prophecy had to be fulfilled at the end of the day, man. Yeah, that was, that was when, uh, when the Lord said, he said, have my chosen y'all and one of y'all a devil. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about the same dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The son of perdition. <laughs> yeah, say so he Shah knew who, who would be, as the scripture says Yahweh Shah knew who would betray him from the beginning already. Mm-hmm. That's heavy, man. He had an intimate relationship with the director. Yeah. So he understood the little, <laughs> the script. The little script, the little nuances of the script. Yep. Look at that. Howard Shaw's composure is so bad. Just Bro, so, yeah, he's sitting there eating dude. chicken. <laughs> and then he eating it. Yeah. I be saying little snide stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be, be sarcastic. Y'all yeah, know how I am. I be yeah, like, man. Sneak this <laughs> Some of y'all some hoes. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. I ain't gonna say yeah. nothing. Yeah. I don't I'm like all y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they out there preaching and prophesying. Yeah, you yeah. Looking, yeah, you, you looking at up there staring at Judas. like. Cause you know he probably <laughs> preaching hard too. Yeah, you know, hard. You know. Man. Yeah. Yeah. you watching everything he do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn, oh, speak say it. I'm here. Bringing, oh, bringing you your sandals. You just look at him like, all right, man, thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah, wash his Dang, feet. Yeah, yeah, he wash his feet. Wash his feet, knowing that he was gonna betray him. Yep, the whole time. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Sheesh. That was on that. Yeah. 
James, you said James 1? Yeah, James 1 and 1. James chapter 1, verse 1, and it reads, it says, James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My, mm -hmm. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yeah, but, this, so this, that's verse 3. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, can we look up that word patience? Patience. Yeah. So even in doubt with that gift of faith, right? Because nobody's going to be rehearsing the righteous acts unless they have that gas in the tank. And this is what we got to focus on in the home stretch. So this is the, this is the characteristic that the elect are going to have. The definition is A, right? Uh, the definition for patience? Yeah, patience. Is Hyper, uh, hypomone? Let me see here. Yep, yep. Yep. A. Strong's G, 5281. Upamane. 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 Hypomone? <laughs> That's not like a nigga <laughs> woman. Hypomone. <laughs> it says steadfastness, consist, constancy, endurance. Uh, like I always say that, you know, you want to separate a real good fighter from a champ. It's those who can consistently work at a high level for 12 rounds. Yeah. That's the separation. They don't drop off. They, they, stay, they have a steady, consistent, high-level work rate. Yeah. They have endurance, right? <coughs> and in our, our faith, we want to have championship-level faith, mm. okay? You want to have constancy in the later rounds, all right, with your faith. He that endure to the end. Right. It says, in the New Testament, the characteristic of a man who has not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and suffering. Mm -hmm. Right? Follow the lamb. Patiently and steadfastly patient, steadfastly waiting for, enduring, sustaining, perseverance. Yeah, so that definition in the, in the A part, that's what I wanted to get. Yeah. To end it off. Yeah. That's the quality you must possess to receive salvation. If you do not have that, you're not going to pass the test. Well, it's a key quality of success, period. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual success principle. Patience. Mm -hmm. Name one thing that, that you want to do and you want to be good at, but you don't have no patience that you're going to succeed. No. So being patient is critically necessary to be successful in anything that you want to do. Even if playing a, even if it's playing a video game. You want to be good at the video game? You're going to have to be patient as you die over and over and over again, most likely. My son was watching me play God of War the other day. How many times did I die? Like 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, went through 14 controllers, but did I figure it out? <laughs> yeah, I like did. Certain games like Metal Gear Solid, like you got to be patient and hide behind, right. hide in the locker for a second to let the guard pass by first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus yeah. just running, yeah. running blazing, yeah. get your ass blazing. Yeah. <laughs> at anything at a job that you're doing, yeah. you know, a relationship with a woman. The if you wanted to be successful, you're gonna have to learn patience, yeah. right? So how much you know the kingdom. Yeah, right. Patience is key. Mm -hmm. You got to buy and hold this truth. <laughs> you got to buy and hold. It's like a stock. You got to buy and hold. Trading back and forth going to get you killed. Yeah. You're going to lose all your monies. <laughs> you got to have diamond hands, as they call it. Right? We got to hold on to this truth. Patience. It's your like, patience possesses you your soul. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Can I get the definition of the word meek in the Greek? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Hell the definition of the uh, well the word Greek or excuse me, the word meat in the Greek is pradus. And it says uh it's like a little they put they added actually they actually added this to the blue letter. It says meekness toward the most high is that disposition of spirit in which we accept his dealings with us as good, and therefore without disputing or resi uh, resisting. In the Old Testament, the meek are those wholly relying on the Most High rather than their own strength to defend mm. against injustice. Man. Thus, meekness toward evil people means knowing the Most High is permitting the injuries they inflict, that he is using them to purify his elect, and wow. that he will deliver his elect in his time. Play that hard, bro. Oh, my 
Yeah. See? Yeah. It says, gentleness or meekness is the opposite to self-assertiveness and self-interest. It stems from trust in the Most High's goodness and control over the situation. The gentle person is not occupied with self at all. This is a hope. This is a work of the Holy Spirit, not of the human will. Time for the bird to be there. Man, go ahead, man. man. <laughs> no, I mean that's that, that's the definition. So being meek in the eyes of Yahweh Bashan Al Shah is understanding that His will is going to be done regardless. So. When you look at afflictions, when you look at temptations, when you look at persecutions, all these things are happening so that what? His elect are being purified for a particular purpose to be glorified at the end of the day. So you allow these things to happen, like Yahweh Shah. What did Yahweh Shah tell Pontius Pilate? He was like, man, look, you know, he was like, Pontius Pilate was pretty much like, you know, don't you know that I got the power to put you to death? You know, and Yahweh Shah was like, man, look, the only power that you got is the power that, that my father gave him. Like, you, only, you can only do what my father said that you can do at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's how we got to look at in any scenario situation, even when persecution comes. The only thing that these people are doing at the end of the day, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, is he allowed it to happen for a that's particular right, purpose. Man. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's being meek. Not being self willed, not being proud. <laughs> that's what truly being meek means. That's why the scripture says that uh, uh that uh the Lord is not to them of a broken heart and of a contrite spirit. Because you understand and know that he's in control. You need him. You yes. need him at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, 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 the brothers in Maccabees. Yes. They Perfect took they, they was like, man, look, do what you do because at the end of the day we know we're coming back. Now you on the other hand, mm-hmm. you going through. Right. We gonna come back. So do what you need to do. Ultimately the Lord is allowing us to happen for a for a reason. Man, that's beautiful. Excellent, excellent, beautiful. Okay. Uh, you want me to finish up this in James? Uh, it was just verse three, the word in verse three. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was that patient. Okay. Yeah. So we've read what people on the comment board. Uh, that would not be right, but go ahead though. Um, uh-huh. um, back in James one and three, it says, "Knowing this, that the trying of your fir- faith <clears throat> worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work." Mm-hmm. That ye may be perfect and in, entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not doubting, not going back and forth. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a, a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Okay? For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Okay? And so, yeah, we're supposed to be, uh, you know, ten toes down. That meek mindset and patiently enduring because we, we, we know what the Most High uh, wrote. We know what he put in our hearts. That's right. So you walk with that vision and that sight in your mind that, okay, the Lord is going to come back. We're going to get in power. We're going to be changed. And this is only a temporary experience. This is not the end all be all of life. This is like, like, uh, like Elder Yashua Wampa said, this is just rental. This is just a cheap rental. Yeah. This body, this oh, situation, man, right. it's yeah. just a cheap rental until we get to the real thing, you know? Right. But yeah. Um, Elder Nasser, like, about back you up. Somebody did a, well, I'll just read it off of here. It's Numbers 12 and 3. It says, Now the man Moses was very meek. Yeah, yeah. Above all the men. Which were upon the face of the earth. And if you look at the example of Moses, man, a lot of the decisions, most people wouldn't have did the stuff he did. Most people wouldn't have, wouldn't have went back to Egypt in the first place. Mm-hmm. Most people wouldn't have had the patience to deal with those niggas. Mm-hmm. Like those was high level niggas. Yeah. You know, Charleston, why is all those ignorant ass motherfuckers back there? <laughs> man. <laughs> dealing with niggas like that. Uh, yeah, Boosie, yeah, all them niggas Murmuring. was there, bro. Yeah. Murmuring, talking shit. Coming, you come down from the mountain, you see these. Moses understood, like you know what? At the end of the day, the Lord is doing. This is all the Lord is doing. He's pulling all the strings. Yeah. So, got to play my part. So, and somebody also put up on um, Hebrews twelve and three. It says, "For consider him that endured such contradiction of sin against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds." So again, looking back at Yahweh Shai, you know he knew that. Different things had to take place, and like you mentioned it with the word, that nobody's doing anything that the Lord didn't give them the power to do. Mm-hmm. If we keep that in mind, man, we can't lose. Right. 
Do you mind if I throw the word? Do it. Okay, let's do it. All right, so with that being said, I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakhalakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shall we want to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing the truth in sincerity for the blessing of election be upon Yahweh. Shall we want?